Hi, I'm Jared Falk, and in today's lesson, we're gonna talk about how to muffle your drums. Now, once you have them all tuned up, you might find that certain drums are still ringing or resonating too long. So I'm just gonna give you a couple tips that I use um, either in the studio or live shows where I need to muffle my drums, all right? Now, you might see a roll of toilet paper. I Don't worry, I'm not gonna go to the bathroom or anything, but this is one thing I'll use. I'm gonna show you exactly what I do with that. Also, I use something else called drum gum, okay? And uh, this thing is basically sticky on this side. It's not sticky over here. Drum gum isn't uh, widely available anymore, but there is another product out there called Moon Gel that's very, very similar and has the, kind of the same effect. I really liked drum gum because it wasn't sticky on top. Moon Gel is sticky on both sides, all right? So before we get started, let's just um, talk about the snare drum, okay? Now, I get a lot of complaints from people saying when they hit their 10-inch tom or when they hit their 12-inch tom, their snare drum rattles like crazy. It buzzes with the wires underneath. And so what I want to um, talk to you guys about is how to kind of stop that rattle or lessen it, okay? Now, on the bottom of your snare drum, you'll notice these there has wires. And these are the wires that are, even when I talk, you can hear the wires rattling, right? Um, but you can't complete, you can't always completely stop the rattle. But one thing I learned from uh, one of our instructors is a guy from Schroeder is he would say tighten the pegs on each side of the snare wires. Okay, so tighten these tension rods in to create kind of a bed. So you'll actually notice the hoop um, somewhat dipping a tiny, tiny bit. Don't do it too much. You don't want to wreck anything. And, you know, be careful when you're doing it. Okay, this isn't something I do all the time. I'll do it with some of my drums It's if it's really a big problem. Normally, that doesn't stop the buzz, but it kind of lessens it, okay? So the next thing I want to talk about is the snare ring. Now, a lot of you will be getting snare ring or extra resonance on the toms for that matter. And so the first thing I recommend you look at getting um, is some sort of dampening system or dampening product actually designed for dampening drums, okay? Uh, and that's just because it's, it always, it's designed to work with drums. It's not gonna leave any residue all over the drums. It's not gonna pull any of the, the chrome or pit any of your chrome or do anything like that. You don't want it to pull paint off or stuff like that. So now this is a, a larger piece. Um, I could actually cut this down and I could choose if I want to do um, if I, I just need a tiny, tiny bit of dampening or if I want to do a lot of dampening, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll just put it on the edge of the drum. Just like that. And same with the toms. If I'm finding the toms are, are ringing too much, if they're, if they're just ringing a little bit too much, what I would do is I would cut this in half and put it right on the edge. Okay? This is too big, obviously, but... Um, and same with all these other toms. <clears throat> you might find that the, the 16, if you have a 16 inch tom, or 14, or if you have an 18 inch tom, that um, these like to resonate, especially when you're in the studio. And so some, a lot of guys would like those to be choked just a little bit more. Um, the next thing I wanna talk to you guys about for dampening, and this is, some people might watch this video and be like, don't ever do that to your drums. So um, you can choose whether or not you wanna do it. Uh, the, the tape I'm gonna be using is called gaff tape, and it's a tape designed for working within um, video situations so it doesn't leave any residue. Not like duct tape where you'll find if you tape that onto your drums, it's gonna leave a little bit of residue. So what I do is I take a piece of, of toilet paper and I just fold it up. This is still a little bit too big, so I'm just gonna tear that in half. It's like arts and crafts time, hey? Eh? So I fold this up into a square, okay? Then I'm gonna grab this gaff tape. Now you can use duct tape, just don't put it on the shell or on the, the chrome, put it only on the head, okay? Otherwise, you, you might um, leave some residue on your drums that you can't get off. And then just take a piece of tape. Whoa, let's get to see how weak I am. Um, piece of tape, and then I put this right inside there, so there's space around, around there. And then what I do is I'll just set it down, I'll put it right here, set it on the snare drum, and then push it down, okay? This is gonna make a, a big difference. At the time of, of this snare drum, it doesn't need any dampening, so I'm actually not gonna leave it on. But if I have found it was ringing too much and I couldn't control it otherwise, or the engineer just wanted it to ring less or they wanted it to be drier, this is something I would do, 
if I put it right there, and you might have seen this in some of my older videos and stuff like that. Okay, this thing can also, this sort of system, will also work on like the bottom of your floor toms, the top of your floor toms, because it adds a little bit more dampening than the drum gum would. Okay, the drum gum at times can be a little bit light, especially if the engineer or someone wants the drums very, very dry, then this system would work better. And what you can do is, it's very easy to take off afterwards, especially with, this called gaff tape, okay? So there you go, that's like a great thing to have in your stick bag or in your hardware case or something where you can muffle the drums that way. Okay, so that's some, some tips on toms. As far as uh, muffling goes, you know, when should you muffle, when is too much ring, when is too little ring, it's kind of up to you to decide uh, what you need, what you want, and it's kind of like if the engineer or someone you're working with says they want your drums to sound um, a little more dry, a little more dead, uh, not as much resonance, then you'll want to look at doing some sort of muffling techniques, okay? But you don't want to always muffle, like if your drums are sounding horrible or they're not tuned properly, they're completely out of tune, you don't want to just muffle them to try and fix that, okay? So you don't want it, you don't want it to muffle to mask poor tuning. You only want to muffle to enhance the sound of your drums and to kind of give the people that are listening to the music better sounding drums and, and then better sounding music. Okay, so now I'm just going to actually go down to the front of the bass drum and we're going to discuss exactly what I do in there to muffle my bass drum. So now we're down here at the bass drum and I want to show you guys exactly what I do uh, to get the bass drum sound that I do. And I'm actually going to pull everything out so you guys can see exactly what's in there. Okay, so I have a light white sheet, uh, it can be black or whatever. It's not, it's not very heavy, it's very, very light. And then I have a black sheet as well. Um, one, one good thing about having a hole in the bass drum, obviously, is that you can easily put stuff, um, put stuff inside of it, muffle it more, or you could take stuff out of it so if you want more of an open sound, okay? This again is another light sheet. This was bought just at a fabric store, like you can see through I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see through the, the black sheet there. And so then it's just rolled up like that, okay? That's what I have. And then I also have this pad. You always want to be very careful when pulling stuff in and out of there. Evans ha actually has a reinforcement ring here, but still you want to be careful. Uh, they have an EQ pad, okay? Now this EQ pad just Velcros to the bottom of the drum. I just put some adhesive strips in there and then this sits on there. This basically sits on the bottom of the drum and then this sits against the head, okay? So every time I hit the bass drum, this might move off a little bit to kind of give it more of that open sound, but this is what I put in there first, okay? That's, I'm just gonna re-muffle it for you guys so you can see exactly what I do. Okay, so that's sitting on the back of the head, or on the, on the front of the, the head. Next thing I do is I put this thing in, okay? Now, the way I want to do it is I'm actually, I would actually, once it's inside, I'll fold it in half. Actually, I can probably do it like this now. And then this is going to rest, if it was on the, the batter side there, it's going to rest in the drum like this. So normally, I'll try and make sure I never muffle above where the beater is hitting the batter head, okay? So this just sits on the inside and kind of arcs like that. And it kind of just deadens the, the ring of the bass drum, the overall sound, because I want more of a thump and I want more, a lot of bottom end, but I don't want a ton of resonance, okay? Just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back in. And then position it. Now normally I would do this with this back head off, but I wanted to show you guys what I do on the rezzo head as well, because I think that's important. Okay, so now that's sitting on the batter head there. Now this one, this is a smaller sheet. And now I do the same thing, but I put this on the rezzo head right here. Okay, so on the inside, it's just going to sit like that. And again, it's just going to dampen it and help kill some of the ring, but still give me enough resonance and sustain that you get a nice kind of throaty bass drum sound. Okay, so that one sits all the way, it's all the way up to here, comes all the way over to there. Whew. 
Cool, so that is how I muffle my drums. That's how I muffle my bass drum. I hope that helps you guys. I hope that gave you a few tips and insights to help you guys next time you're trying to get that perfect sound out of your drum set. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Is my mouse still red? That's gonna be a nice bone. That's Matt Shank's fault for sending me now later candies. Oh, I'm starting to feel sick now. I ate almost a whole pack in like 10 minutes. Steve's gonna be smacking his gums in the back the whole time. Okay.